Joining us now is the author of Aftershock, investment advisor Bob Wiedemer. Bob, we welcome you back to America's Forum. Well, thanks, J.D. It's good to be here. And it's good to have you Skyping in right there from Washington, D.C. You know, we used to joke about Washington, Bob. Uh, my friend, the late, great uh, Jennifer Dunn, used to say Washington, D.C. was the world's only uh, gun-free drug zone, but that's, a, that's another statement for another day. Uh, what is going on? I mean, yesterday you have Wall Street, you have the markets way up, then we get the report on the GDP, the growth even below anemic at 0.1% for the first quarter of this year. What's going on? Well, you know, this isn't anything new in a sense. I mean, let's face it, last year the stock market was up 30% when our economy is growing 2 to 3%, and earnings aren't growing much more than 2 to 3% either. So, you know, and a, and a stock market way out of whack with the economy is nothing new. But uh, it is interesting, you know, that we almost went into stall speed, no growth in the first quarter, and everybody's saying everything's fine. It's just the same thing as before. Won't last forever, but nothing new in that sense. Uh, you and I have had our share of, uh, well, we'll call it, we share skepticism. That may be putting it mildly. <laughs> share a skepticism about the Fed and the easing and the interest rates and all that is going on. Is it a good sign that even though the easing continues, the Fed appears to be tapering it in some key sectors? Well, again, same song, third verse. We've done this before. We tapered after QE1, only to find that the economy and stock market was in trouble, so we brought QE2. We tapered after QE2, only to find that the stock market economy is in trouble, so we did QE3. We're going to taper down. Maybe we'll get to zero. Maybe we won't, but I think we'll see this story repeat again. When we get into trouble, they're going to put the printing press back on if we need to pump up the stock market. Let's keep in mind, you said the stock market hit record highs. It's gone almost nowhere this year, barely up 1% year to date. So, you know, we're already seeing some impact from this tapering. And I could easily, well, I'm sure that they will, you know, untaper uh, if we run into any real problems coming up in the next few months or year. Well, let's take a look at the immediate here and now. And we may step back and boy, the easing may, may come back again. But right now, what does the Fed's announcement do to interest rates in the here and now? Well, not much. Uh, that's what's been fascinating about how the markets have been reacting. Theoretically, we all know with tapering, when you're buying fewer bonds, interest rates should go up, but they haven't been. In fact, bonds have been a pretty good investment, you know, so far year to date. In fact, bonds have pretty, pretty much been a good investment since the Fed started tapering, which makes no sense at all. But that's how it's been. I don't see that's going to change in the near future in the next month or two down the road. Now, that could be a different story. Well, let's drill down a little more, mentioning the magic word of bonds. Mm -hmm. uh, Treasury bonds right now, with what is going on, is that a, still a sound investment? Uh, it certainly has been the first few months of this year. It's been a good returner. Um, probably you've gotten a, a bit of the jump, you, you, you know, the biggest jump for the six months in the earlier part of this uh, first half of the year. But I'd still bet on bonds for here and now, next month or two. Uh, I think they're a good investment. Uh, longer term, it could change, clearly. It will change. And accordingly now, with with the, what has transpired, will we see overall in the market a rotation from stocks? Will will most of the money go into bonds at this point, given what you're seeing? Well, that that's probably what's happened to some extent so far, and that's one reason the bond market has been well. But, uh, you know, I don't think we're going to see a big rotation out of stocks quite yet. I mean, what we're seeing is a rotation out of higher risk stocks to lower risk stocks. The the unloved stocks of last year, the utilities, high dividend stocks have done really well in the first half of this year. So I think you're seeing a little more rotation within the stock market right now. Uh, later on, that could change. But again, higher interest rates will also offset some of the Allura bonds. Uh, it, at least, you know, they'll fall in value. Um, and that'll offset some of it. But you know, right now, I think it's just a, a rotation within the stock market, not really out of stocks into bonds too much. Well, Brother Wiedemer, you wrote that book, Aftershock, and that more than implies that, that something wicked, well, this is another title. I think this is a Ray <laughs> Bradbury title, Something Wicked This Way Comes. Uh, but what, what should we keep in mind? Because we, we get talking about highfalutin investments on Wall Street and stocks and bonds. 
but you're talking about a, another financial meltdown. So if we've got the roadmap according to Wiedemer, and we want to survive the aftershock or the next meltdown, what is it we need to do? Well, one thing, remember that this whole, quote, recovery is fake. It's driven by massive money printing and massive government borrowing. I mean, we're going to borrow probably twice as much this year as our entire economy will grow. That's the government alone borrowing money. So let's let's not think that this is somehow growth uh, that's on its own. Uh, it, it's organic. It's not. It's stimulated growth. So keep that in mind. Like any bubble, it's fine to ride it up. Just make sure you get out before it goes down. Now, we, we talk about our situation in the United States, and uh, certainly last hour and a lot of viewers weighing in on uh, the coming changing of the guard, if you will, economically in terms of the international hierarchy. One is tempted to call it the, the rise of the Red Guard, uh, evoking <laughs> memories of Mao, but yeah. the Chinese economy moving into a position of preeminence, taking over the number one spot from the United States. Uh, while we look at our economic uh, meltdown or things that have happened in the past, we hear so much about a global economy and a type of contagion that could spread because of the interrelated uh, nature of our global economy. Is there any path that an investor needs to take internationally to avoid problems here, or, or, or what happens with the American economy vis-a-vis -vis the so-called global economy and international investment? Yeah, well, one thing to keep in mind is that China's bubble economy is even bigger than ours. We may have given out funny loans to people who maybe couldn't pay them back, but China is building empty buildings, infrastructure that's not being used, left and right, uh, in, factories that are not being fully used. So there's enormous amount of of printing money and bubble in China too. So uh, I think be careful of that. It could go up a while longer. They can print money too, but be careful. And it is a global economy. If China falls, it will definitely affect us. Uh, and it is definitely a projection that China will go above our economy. It has not yet uh, in terms of GDP. Uh, but I think the big thing is to keep in mind that the U.S., although we may not be driving the world economy's growth, certainly that is what China is doing now, it's really the growth engine, we still drive financial stability. So if the U.S. has problems, that's going to cause a huge problem around the world. But until then, uh, we can kind of help stabilize the world, even if China has some problems. But it's going to kick us off balance. Ultimately, we're going to lose it, But uh, and, that, and only then will we have a big major aftershock type problem. Bob, uh, before you go, kind of a combination uh, economic cultural question. We mm -hmm. hear about the Chinese building a city in New York State. We see all, I guess, the Chinese version of the nouveau riche coming and investing in real estate in, in California. Is there anything that should uh, concern us about these moves by the Chinese on American soil? Sound familiar? Remember when Japan, during the height of its bubble boom, was buying up Rockefeller Center and uh, uh, all places like Pebble Beach? Sounds familiar, huh? When you got bubble money, it's going to flow into assets outside the economy. And that's just what's happening with China. Probably encourage a bit more because corruption is a major part of Chinese wealth. In other words, corruption, as we know, in China is big. And that's going to be a reason to get your money out of China as fast as you can into other assets. Uh, but, you know, so that's part of what's going on uh, with China coming over there. Now, cities like they're building a copy of New York City in China. Well, they've already stopped construction on that. That's now an empty city, a construction project that has been abandoned. And we will keep our eye on that. Bob Wiedemer, will leave it right there. We appreciate your insights and analysis on the economy. And, of course, we recommend your book, Aftershock. No shock here, just more stories straight ahead. Uh, we want to hear from you here on America's Forum.